What was it that drew both of you to this line of work? Um, I think by accident. Um, Edmund worked in advertising. That's why he thought he was going to be a swinging ad man all his life. So <laughs> could you so imagine? He, he could get out of Africa and get to London. You know, he'd get to the top. Well, after we emigrated to America, we then then we got a project which was travel cassettes for TWA, and it was during the course of researching those those um, cassettes and writing them that we discovered that we liked writing about people, and. Um, he then got a, an agent and she said, oh, she said, we know a, a publisher who wants a short, popular biography of Theodore Roosevelt. Are you game for that? Oh, yes, absolutely, I'd love to do that. He knew nothing about Theodore Roosevelt and very little really about American history at that point. They so wanted he, a short biography. A short, popular biography, <laughs> which turned into a trilogy, as you know, and won him the Pulitzer Prize and the American Book Award to boot. So um, that's how we really drifted into our line of work. I was helping him type his manuscript on Theodore Roosevelt, and I said, what about this woman he married? Nothing's known about her, he said. So that was sort of throwing down the gauntlet to me, and I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. And I did, and found that she was quite fascinating. And What a wonderful team. <laughs> As it turned out. I mean, that's yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. He wrote, ended up writing seven books, and I wrote three. And. Um, Ten altogether. It's not a bad record, really. <laughs> no, especially when they're of the quality that they are. Yes, and also the extensive research that was required for them, and particularly the Reagan book, because he had to follow him around at the White House for four years. You know. Now that book was so controversial. What? How does that? How does all that sit with you? And how did it sit with him? Toward the end. He'd probably tell you it was his favorite book. <laughs> he would. Because he wanted to do something different. You see, he said biography was so stick in the mud in a way, it was sort of birth to death, and he just wanted a new, new way of doing it. Somebody observing the person. Everything in that, word, in that book is true about Reagan, but he pretended that he knew him in school and he knew him in college, and there was somebody watching him very closely in those years. Of course, it's all based on research, the mm. letters that Reagan wrote in those years. That, of course, got the, the critics very exercised. Yes, but a lot to say of people least. think it's his greatest work. It's a uh, very divided. What did you think of that opinion. idea when he first said it to you? Well, at first I was horrified, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but and he really wanted—he wanted, he wanted to change the way <laughs> biographies were done. Yes. What is Edmund's legacy? I think his legacy will be a. He was a great biographer, but also he was willing to. Uh, make changes in the structure of the work, do something original that hadn't been done before. I think that would be his greatest pride in his work. That takes courage. And it takes courage, yes. And you've got to be prepared that the critics are not going to be kind, but you feel you have the conviction, if you have that conviction, it's what you should do, you go ahead anyway. And he did it. And he did. A bunch, a bunch of times. A bunch of times. Including now. <laughs> including now. I can't help but think that he, but, and, and, and you were both so fascinated by these, these people, these famous people in history who were so bold and made so many changes. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's what the, this work is all about, too. Yes, I, I hadn't thought of it like that, but you have a good point there, that he shook up the genre in which he worked. He did something different that he knew wouldn't be popular with many people. But he felt uh, biography needed a little shaking up, I think. We know the work of Edmund, the author and the biographer. What do you want people to know about Edmund, the person? His versatility, for one thing. For example, he was so good at music, you see. And when I met him, um, he was still thinking of being a concert pianist. And I said, well, look, why don't you go down to Trinity College in London and just sign up for the course? There must be a course on concert pianism. And so he went. And he came back in short order. And I said, well, did you sign up? And he said, no, I was about to go into the building. And I suddenly realized, he said, if people criticized my piano playing, it didn't bother me all that much. But if they criticized my writing, I got extremely upset. And that's the way he made the choice. But when I met him, he was still hankering to be a concert pianist. How did the two of you meet? <laughs> you really want to know this yeah, story? I do. <laughs> well, 
Well, I had actually been in America for two and a half years on my own. I did the usual things, the West Coast, Mexico, the trips, and thought, well, I better go back to England now since I'm English. So I went back to England to take up my former teaching job, and um, I took a room in a house in Marylebone, in London, and uh, the woman who owned the house said, oh, by the way, she said, you may find when you come home some nights, there'll be somebody cleaning the, the house. It's a young man who, in exchange for being able to play my piano every lunchtime, he comes from his Ogilvy and Mather job, and he plays the piano for an hour lunchtime. I thought, well, when did the guy eat? I mean, really? So a week goes by or two, and I'm opening a bathroom door one, one evening, and I see this man kneeling on the floor, polishing it. And I thought to myself, oh, he does floors. I wonder if he does windows. <laughs> I literally thought that. Isn't that weird? <laughs> well, we go by, and one night he came down to say good night, he thought, to his um, employer. And I was in the kitchen about to make dinner. And uh, I said, oh, uh, she's not here at the moment. And then I noticed he was carrying a paper bag. And I said, what do you have in that bag? He said, oh, it's my dinner. I said, oh, what is it? Let me see. So I look in, and it's a slice of um, lion's corner apple pie. That was dinner. And I said, this is not nutritious. You're really suffering from malnutrition if you're eating like this. He said, oh, I wonder why the hairs were falling out of my legs. So I said, sit down. I make you an omelet. I made him an omelet. Well, as they say, way to a man's heart through his stomach, right? So you married the house cleaner. <laughs> the house cleaner, I thought. But of course, as soon as he got married, it's a different story. He's up at the desk already. Before Writing. I can turn my head. Or working. Working, yes. I think what, what he's left behind and what you have worked on here is, is so special. And I think it's something that a lot of people want to hear about. And I just find it interesting. That you, it just, it's, it, it, it's the dedication and it's also just the conviction to stay with something. Um, no matter how complicated or difficult that was. Like, and it just seems like he was un, um, unbending, right? Yes, in a way. Both of you, I think. I think he, he would have called it not stubbornness so much or unbending, but um, wanting to do something unusual, uh, to do something in a different way that would shake up the genre, as, as it were, of biography.